has often been used, including, for example, uh, in the electoral result that we were involved in in Kenya in 2007, is you just tell the people uh, what's going on and then they'll be angry about it and they'll oppose it. But actually the real situation is much more rich and interesting than that. Rather, yes, the, the demos knows, the population starts to know, and they start to know in a way that's undeniable. And they also start to know that the United States knows. The United States can't deny what was going on uh, inside uh, Tunisia. And then the elites within the country and without the country also know what is going and know they can't deny it. So a, a situation developed where it was not possible for the United States to support the Ben Ali regime and intervene in a revolution in Tunisia in the way that it might have. Similarly, it was not possible for France to support Ben Ali or other partners in the same way that they might have been able to. Also, in our, in our strategy in dealing with this region uh, and uh, our, our survival strategy for Cablegate was to overwhelm. That is, we have Saudi Arabia, for example, propping up a number of states in the Middle East, um, uh, in, in fact, invading Bahrain even to, to do this. Um, but when these states have problems of their own to deal with and political crises of their own to deal with, they turn inwards and they can't be involved in this prop up. So Cablegate as a whole caused these elites that prop each other up into region within the Arab speaking countries and within between Europe and these countries and between the United States and these countries to have to deal with their own political crises and not spend time giving intelligence briefings on activists or sending in um, the SAS or, or other um, support. And activists within Tunisia saw this very quickly. Everyone could see, and no one could deny, that the Ben Ali regime was fundamentally corrupt. Um, it's not that the people there didn't know it before, but it became undeniable to everyone, including the United States. And that the United States, or at least the State Department, could be read that if it came down to supporting the army or Ben Ali, they would probably support the army, the military class, rather than the political class. So that gave activists and the army uh, a belief that they could possibly pull it off. But this wasn't enough. So all that was intellectual. And, and was making a difference and was stirring things up in Tunisia. Uh, and then you had this action by a 26-year-old uh, computer technician who said, um, self-immolated. And that taking a sort of intellectual frustration and irritation and hunger for change and undeniability to an emotional, physical act on the street is then what changed the equation. But there's other things, that are sort of a, a more systemic issue that was gradually breeding up, which is you had aging rulers in the Middle East that whose regimes to that extent were becoming weaker. The intellectual management of them was decreasing. You also had the rise of satellite TV and the decision by Al Jazeera staff to film and broadcast protest scenes on the street. So most revolutions kick off in a crowd situation like this one, where everyone can, you know, all the time the regime is saying, um, this voice is an outcast voice. This is a minority. This is not popular opinion. And what the media does is censor those voices and prevents people from understanding that actually that what the state is saying is in the minority is in the majority. And once people realise that their view is in the majority, then they understand they have, physically have the numbers. And there's, there's no better way to do that than in some kind of public square, which is why Korea Square in uh, Egypt was so important, because everyone could see that they had the numbers. Um, 
And that's, you know, this is, I often perceive that there are moments like that politically. Um, yes, the Middle East was one that we might be going through.